world and welcome to my main wrap up. I've read some really cool books this month so let's just get right into it. Let's start with the book that I last mentioned as currently reading. Um, at the end of my April wrap up I said I had about like 10 pages of this left to read and I read those 10 pages. Wow I'm so good. Um, this is the fourth installment in the Secret Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. Um, this is just a really fun little series. Um, it's a romance novel series about men who have a book club where they read romance novels to kind of become better men, better husbands, better lovers, all that stuff. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really wholesome and sweet and the friendship between the men is just really lovely. Um, I'm gonna be honest, this one was my favorite, even though I really like the main character. Um, but I just, yeah, I liked some of the others better. Um, I thought the relationship in this one was kind of weak. Um, but apart from that, I really enjoy the series as a whole and I think it's really sweet and lovely. And it's one of those books where I just wish more men would also read it, even though it's like cheesy and yeah, just like a romance novel tropey book because I just think, you know, I actually think some men would like <laughs> get some good advice here and some like good representation of how male friendships can be really like caring and sweet and yeah. I just really like the series. <laughs> um, and I also had to read this, or had to read this, because we were doing a book presentation at work of like some favorite new books that we read. Um, and I presented this one, and also my next read, which was Novalis. Um, Novalis, Novalis um, is my favorite German poet. Um, he lived in the 18th century, um, so like 1770, I think? 1770, yeah. Um, and yeah, he's a really important poet for the German poetry movement, um, but he's kind of overlooked because he died really young and most of his work was unfinished. Um, so there's a lot of like fragments and he wrote two novels which never got finished, um, but I personally really, really love his poetry collections. Um, I think the first installment of one of his novels was like really beautiful and I just think he's a really wonderful, wonderful poet. Um, and yeah, he had his anniversary this year, 200 years, 250 years, 250 years, sorry. Um, and this is kind of like a collection of most of his work with like biographical context so I learned a lot of stuff about him I have all my sticky notes of like interesting new facts that I now know about my favorite author and because it was his anniversary year I also got some really pretty um what's the word why can't I remember the word bookmarks <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> completely blank, blank there. Um, some really pretty bookmarks um, that are especially uh, Novalis bookmarks and yeah, nice little collection. Next I read a manga called Insomniacs After School. This is a new manga I'm starting. This is the first part. Um, it's about two kids in high school, I think, um, and they don't really know each other that well, but basically both of them um, suffer from sleeping pro problems, um, they can't sleep at night, so they're like really really tired during the day at school. Um, and they find the empty observatorium of the school that isn't being used and uh, they kind of use it as their little <laughs> nap time place um, and get to know each other that way. And then also start spending the nights where they can't sleep doing like little adventures and taking walks and that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's really calm and sweet and cozy. Um, and I, I really think it's an interesting topic. I don't think I've ever read anything about people with insomnia. So that's interesting. And it's really beautifully um, drawn and I really like the characters. There's not much going on this far because it is only the first installment. 
but you can tell that like these two just really are a good match. I already feel the chemistry and they're really funny as well. So really nice little mango. Also really nice little book. Um, I read More Weird Things Customers Say in a Bookshop um, by Jen Campbell. This is just a collection of, as the title says, really weird things customers say in bookshops. And <laughs> it was really funny but also kind of frustrating at times because I've had all of these customers at one point or another. And let me tell you, <laughs> not everything is funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, as a bookseller myself, I really enjoyed this collection. Um, the illustrations are also really sweet, but mostly it's just like, oh yeah, I've had that customer. That was weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a little collection. And it was a lot of fun to read and also talk to with my colleagues. Um, and then I also read uh, Wie sollte man ein Buch lesen by Virginia Woolf. These are two of Virginia Woolf's essays on reading and writing and like how the readers but also the professional critics influence how people write and read um, and they both are commented by Sheila Hetty and it's a really interesting connection because obviously Virginia Woolf like lived in a different time when it comes to reading and reading perception and like how critics publish their criticism but I found it really, really interesting like how some of the things she says really still connect with how I read and how, how I view books um, and the book community. And Sheila Hetty has some really interesting like more modern takes on it um, and some really interesting like insight in how she sees um, the things that Virginia Woolf is saying. So a really short book, but I think it's one I'm gonna actually go back to and read again in a couple of years because there was some really like just really interesting and thoughtful and sweet things uh, said about the book community. Next up I read Coach Saw by Simone Biles. You may remember that I read this little uh, interview collection. Um, this is I Know This To Be True with Simone Biles, basically an interview about her like moral standpoint as a person. Um, and I found this really, really interesting, but I wanted more because this is so short. So I picked up her official autobiography um, and had more, definitely. She is such an interesting person. Um, just as a human being, <laughs> she's already so interesting. And then obviously she's like one of the world's best gymnasts. And that's so fascinating. Um, this was published right after she won the Olympics in Tokyo 2016. So it doesn't include anything about her um, yeah, mental health journey and about the Olympics 2020. Um, this isn't included in that, but there are already like some things related to that, obviously, because mental health is a process and you can see the lead up to all of that. And it was really interesting to see that inside and also just like her really personal journey and the way she really loves the sport that's so it was so just refreshing and nice to read because obviously there's like pressure and there's um yeah injuries and there's mistakes and there's fears and all of that but mostly she's just positive and energetic and she really enjoys what she's doing and it was a lot of fun to read. I then read <laughs> another manga which I don't have with me because my friend is reading it at the moment um, but I do have the novel version with me. I think this is such a cool concept. Uh, basically this is the autobiography of the first gay man to be married in a same-sex marriage in Japan um, and he wrote this autobiography but then also um, worked in collaboration with a manga artist and made his story into a manga and both of those got published at the same time um, and I read the manga first and really really enjoyed it there was such like really important and impressive things about coming out and about having a same-sex relationship in a society that isn't ready for that and that maybe isn't as repressed as we used to be <laughs> but 
also isn't like completely there yet. <laughs> um, so it was really interesting. It was really heartfelt and honest and I really, really like, oh, I felt with him so much and I was so happy for him in the end. So I can't wait to read the autobiography and actually like get his voice and his writing and um, his full story because you can tell that like in the manga there are only like the main scenes. Obviously they can't adapt everything. So I'm guessing I'm gonna get even more insight in this version. And finally, <laughs> the last book I read in the month of May was Six of Crows by Lee Vadogo. I finally did it. <laughs> um, last year I read the Shadow and Bones trilogy after watching the show. And I've talked about this before, but basically I didn't know that in the show all the characters meet, but in the books they don't. I wasn't aware of that. Um, and the friend who told me to read the books didn't tell me that my favorite characters, mainly the crows, <laughs> don't appear in the original trilogy. So I kind of had to force my way through it. I am really, really excited for season two because I did fall in love with Tamar and Talia in the trilogy. Those are definitely my favorite characters in there. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to see what they do in season two and how the stories will intertwine. But yeah, I finally got to my favorite team. I finally got to read about them and get to know them in the book. And I had so much fun. I was on vacation while I read this. And basically, like, for two days straight, I had beautiful weather. And I just sat at the water, in the sun, just reading the book for two days straight, kind of obsessively. <laughs> um, and it was so, so wonderful. Jasper is like, Mwah! just, I love him so much. Um, the dynamic between Cass um, and Inesh is really interesting because they're so much more like open <laughs> and close. Like in their relationship, there's they so much they flirt so much. <laughs> I don't really know how to say it. And also like we we get the full backstory of Cass and like in the show he's so mysterious and we don't really know anything about him. So it was like really. It was kind of a, a shock to get that much information, but I really, really enjoyed it, obviously. Um, I loved it so much and I'm really excited for my current read, which is Crooked Kingdom. <laughs> obviously, I'm gonna continue right on. Um, I really, really wanna know what happens next. When I read this on vacation, I had to wait for four days because no bookstore around me had the second part. And was so frustrating and I just wanted to know what happens <laughs> uh, and now I finally have the second part and I can read it. I am kind of saving it for this weekend because I want to binge it again um, but I did already start a little bit and I'm really really excited. I am so in love with these characters. I can't wait to read this book and then to read the next books and then to watch season two of the show. I just I totally get it. I get it why this is so beloved because I also love it. And there's an ambulance. I hope everyone's okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of currently also like very soon <laughs> reading Crooked Kingdom and I am so so happy about it. <laughs> so yeah, those are all the books I read in the month of May. I had a wonderful reading month. I had such good reads and also again because I was on vacation um, and because also I had quite a lot of people who like have read the same books or were reading the same books so I had a lot of people to talk to about them which is always fun. I love doing that. Um, so yeah, I had a really really nice reading month. I also have some great books lined up for June. Obviously some queer books but also some great comics and mangoes and I'm really excited for all of that. I hope you are too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read any of the books. Let me know your thoughts on the Shadow and Bone universe and who your favorite characters are. I think my favorite is Jasper, but like the whole Crow team is just genius in their interactions. But I think Jasper is my favorite. Um, let me know what you think. And I hope you always have a reason to smile. And I shall see you soon. Bye!